Hello, this is Meta, and this is a stream where I talk about everything besides the drawing itself. Uh, tonight, we are going to be trying to draw um, uh, tarot card archetypes. So, yeah, that's what we're doing. I've been putting this off for a bit because I've been traveling back and forth and whatnot, but I enjoy, but I, I, I need to actually start, like, actually truly drawing again, you know? It... I've been, like, so out of it recently. Call it art block, but... Eh. I, I, ha I have ideas, it's just that I'm... I guess I'm just a bit too busy. Eh, but that doesn't even feel right. I'm gonna, like, start taking it more seriously, but I I've been reading more, I've been reading more books. And when I mean books, I mean fan fiction. Let's see. Um, I've been doing a lot of Dead by Daylight stuff. Not actually playing the fucking game, but actually playing it. Uh, feeling it out. Feeling. I think I'm just getting more into like serial killers and stuff like that. Well, not serial killers, but, like, fictional serial killers, yeah. Uh, it sounds bad, but it's not, really. I want to do something similar to these sort of, uh... Mm. I haven't even been, like, uh... felt so mixed up in my schedules. I, I, uh, I don't even really know what I want to. I've got so many, I've got so many things that I have to work on. Uh, I think for uh, the tarot archetype I'm gonna do. Uh, it's between, like, the hermit, the empress, and, like, the fool. But I I'm not quite sure what I want to do, you know? Probably the empress. S or maybe the high priestess. Uh, I mean, there's so many good archetypes out there. And I, I enjoy reverse cards, too. I think that's why I enjoy Arcana as a skin line that much, but Arcana is just so, like, beautiful. It's just hard to, like, not like it, you know? I was recently, like, uh, watching... Uh, playthroughs of Psychonauts, so I think I want to do something with that, you know? So, uh, yeah. I guess, so let's get into it. Uh, you know what? I think that it's way funnier if I've got, like, the...
Okay, yeah. Ugh. It's in my inventory now. Oh, uh, yeah. Perfect. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, is the stream gonna go down in quality? Yeah, probably. But it's, uh... It's it's funnier, so I'm gonna fucking do it. <laughs> okay. Kind of want to do something with like. I mean, cards have like a a specific kind of look to it, you know. Like the high priestess has two pillars like this and a figure in the middle. So I guess I'm just wondering what kind of uh, fucking thing I want to do, you know? Uh, uh, face cards. I don't think I want to do, like, lovers, death moon, sun, those kinds of things, because, uh, so, I mean, like, celestial bodies can be fun, it's just, you know, it's, people expect a sun card to have, you know, a fucking sun on it, instead of, like, a sun-based humanoid, also, I don't want to, I don't think I want to go for that, you know? Uh, Maybe I want to do tower. Eh, I'll fuck no. Justice. I'm thinking something of like a hooded figure. Now, is this the right, um, canvas size and shape? Fuck no, it is not. But, um, I don't really matter. I mean, it does, is in, like, actually making it feel like a card. I don't think I want to do strength. No. The devil. No. <laughs> the major arcana is what we're going with. So no, uh, no pentacles, no swords. When I did a uh, Arcana, uh, what's it fucking called? Uh, uh, Vagar. When I went for that, uh, I went for a Wheel of Fortune, uh, mostly because I I enjoy um, Wheel of Fortune as a concept, but also the wheel to me kind of kind of looks like a hat. 
and uh, Vagar is, is nothing if not like 90% hat and like 10% everything else. Even though uh, it is kind of funny. Cool, magician, priestess, empress, lover, the hierophant, chariot, justice, hermit, wheel of fortune, death, temperance, the sun, judgment, the world. Uh, I might do maybe temperance. I mean, it is supposed to be one of the seven holy virtues. But yeah, I guess. Uh, I want to do something on the borders. I enjoy the hermit's design because it's got the lantern and also like a cool wizard old man. It's very fun. The fool is either like almost walking off a cliff or is doing this fucking pose. Yeah, I think I'll do High Priestess. Dwelling presence in the divine. Oh, the Empress and High Priest sisters, sometimes considered sisters. That's fun. I think with, I mean, like, as of recent, people have gotten more conscious of, like, religious figures and modesty in general as a concept. 
like I always see on like TikTok, uh, God forsaken platform, uh, people getting mad at like sexy nuns when I, it's, well, yes, the concept of a sexy nun is kind of, well, is sacrilegious, but that is also a lot of the time that that's the fucking point. Um, uh, it's not really supposed to be, I mean, like, it can be either degrading, but it can also be very empowering to people or whatever, especially someone that has this religious trauma. Uh, nuns in general should not be depicted as, as like sexy in general, I, I, I think, but in, in the right contexts, of course. You know, like, it, it's a way of shedding yourself of religious prudism and stuff like that. I mean, like, there's such a, what's it called? A purity culture that's so ingratiated everywhere. It, it's so... intense it's in it it's in every aspect of life really uh, well aspect of american culture especially and and i think that's why that iconography can be fun and appealing uh but of course it, it depends on the intention and what the audience is supposed to gain from it but that that's it's the thing about every depiction of almost anything, really. Um, it, it really largely depends on the context, what the what the author is intending, what the artist st st wants to convey in a piece. And sure, it can be just done a bashing fan service, uh, but. Fan service shouldn't be looked upon as something inherently wrong or bad in general. It's sex like every other form of fa design convention in the world is just that. It's a design convention. And it's very... I, I think that the the way that we view stuff is is very warped and twisted by you know uh, the media that we consume and obviously it is right but society dictates this this kind of thing and all that I think the point I'm trying to make is that like sex and, and raunchy things like being sexy that's not a, an inherently bad thing it's, even in female character designs it, it's not it's just that a lot of the time it it's awfully fucking boring and an excuse to be lazy it, it's really that's it's the main thing that I, I can criticize, uh, like, people for. Or, like, it just doesn't make sense. It's like, why would this specific character be wearing this, or whatever? It's like any other aspect of life, really. And it's no less of an art form, it's just a very easily abusable art form. And I think that's the main, that's the main distinction, is that it, it's very, very easy to make it uncomfortable and, and slimy, really. But a, a lot of uh, sexuality that we see in media nowadays is very corporatized. It, it's very boring. You can very clearly see the intention 
and you know for male reviewers uh, who realize this uh like sometimes they're like accused of being less of a man for having a problem with said character design when that was never really the that's not the fucking issue it's the issue of believing that the consumer is fucking stupid that this character that they have dressed up uh, it doesn't they don't have to try to appeal to a market or whatever and sure you can just have fun with it right but that's not what a company tips like typically wants to do they want to sell you a product they are selling you something and a way that they do this is by making female characters typically sexually appealing it, and it happens with male characters too where almost none of the cast is anywhere but model pretty not even like um different in terms of face shape or or the way that like hollywood views beauty really when it, it's such a, a lukewarm form of it you know it's and it, I, it's not like it's going to really change until uh, like society has different ideas of what is considered traditionally attractive because at the end of the day companies don't want to actually be all that creative they want to sell to as much of the like lowest common denominator as they can really um and that's how we end up with like the female character problem in general you get such odd like things of like having female characters just wear heels and thigh highs for no reason even though heels and thigh highs aren't the problem it's the inherent scumminess related to it it's the inherent like notion that this character would not fucking wear this they are wearing this because of focus testing because of what is considered attractive or beautiful right and of course we want attractive things we want beautiful things but it, it really shows their lack of research quite frankly because usually what people when people attach to characters it, it's usually because they are unique if you honest like if you gave me like a female moba character from like the 2000s or whatever i would not be able to tell them the fuck apart unless they like unless i played the game and had an emotional connection with them and that's and that's kind of the problem when it comes to this kind of thing you know it's not that sex is bad or female characters being traditionally sexy is bad it's just it's so capitalistic in its intentions it's so boring it's so it's so nothing of the sort really there's no reason for this character to have these kinds of things they're not having a character be confident with their sexuality it, 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 there's nothing there except we want we want money from lonely men or whoever the f or really whoever the fuck owns this character <laughs> because i mean mass appeal is it's it's very easy it's very samey 
and and it's a shame too because consumers aren't fucking stupid it's just that i mean there are a lot of stupid people out there too and it's not like there's any reason to change it up unless enough people uh like directly harass them about it and that's not really a an effective solution to the problem that is faced it, it's really like a and it, it depends on cultures too obviously right but um like you get situations where you have people uncomfortable with the character and the sexuality that they portray and and you can't really be very mad at them it because in a lot of cases it is just there because this it's it's a, a desperate ploy or whatever even though like being sexy having sexy characters is fun it's fucking fun like a lot of things are it, it, but that's not really i mean it's just such a loaded thing a loaded topic for a lot of people it's a source of a lot of identity for a lot of people too and the consumers of media like might not be at the age where they can even really process what that means to them or have the self-awareness to understand that or they have complete self-awareness too and that's not the problem at all it's it's the problem of having this sort of thing be shoved in their face so much and i, I do like the fact that over time people like People have reclaimed cute styles, things that are considered generally sexual or whatever, and just made it their own thing. It, it doesn't have to be pleasing to another person. It's, it's not for someone else, it's for them. It's for the person or whatever. And, and that's a real distinction from from an object something that is easily replaceable infinitely changeable a, a doll and, and making it into something that is what it's supposed to be fun fucking fun okay it it's it's not it, like and I, I guess that's the main thing, is that things can be fun. They can. I guess uh, when it comes to like what what i mean by fun or whatever uh, you can look at like like the female outfits in like uh bayonetta for example right Bay bayonetta is such an example of this is because this creator understands that this is fun this is sexy and we are entirely this is it's not a corporate ploy this isn't because of marketing it's not because of uh appealing to a consumer appealing to a a, a weird base of people it, it's, it's it's because the creator wanted to have fun with a campy premise and went f all in on that and you know it, it's all the better for it it's kind of like i mean lollipop chainsaw can suffer a little bit because of the 
negative tropes associated with cheerleaders in general, but making Juliet the main focus, the main character, all of every thing feels less scummy than it should feel, you know? It, it feels less like I, I'm watching something I'm not supposed to, if that makes sense. And, and that can be a, a real challenge for certain people or whatever, or certain things in general. And, and there's no one real way to make that general thing accessible to all types of people because they have different <laughs> different experiences in life. It's not humans are not just masses of people. They, they aren't just a, a generalized assortment or whatever. It's they are formed by their experiences and see the world according to that or whatever. So I guess I'm just trying to make this kind of opinion understandable because I know that not everyone will feel this way and it, it's perfectly fine for people to disagree with what I'm saying because it, it, in the end, there's very little that you or me in the grand scheme can do to affect the overall zeitgeist and public perception of the way things are. I just think that, in general, we should feel less like stigmatized towards sexual content because that's not that's not the issue at hand it, it's not the reason why people f can feel objectified it, it's not the it's not the main source of it, it it's just the uh loudest beacon of it. it it's it's the easiest thing to point at and say that's uncomfortable or whatever but uh, it's not really... It, it's such a personal thing, too. I mean, so is relationships and that like, and the like, but that's a whole other topic, right? Where romance is so rarely done right. It, it's often shoehorned in without cause or purpose. It's because they needed more emotional drama in in a series when it, it perfect it, it would have been completely fuck fine without it it's just a quota that they need or whatever even in very good shows or whatever they can do this where you're just confused at why they decided that relationship drama and the will they won't be they is what audiences want or whatever it feels like it, it it feels like a a quota or whatever that they have to go for and sometimes it's not sometimes it's just writers not being good at writing specific things or whatever or being inexperienced in writing them it, it's not really fair to creatives in that sense or whatever, but it, it is why uh, why fan fiction a lot of the time don't actually include the canon couples because they're awfully boring and fucking stupid. Usually, if in. Usually the girl character in a lot of these st stories are completely just shoehorned in without chemistry, without personality for this plot, which makes it feel hollow. Anyway, hello, Mauro. How are ya?
it's actually why most of the ships that you'll see on AO3 are of like the the main character and their closest friend or whatever because there's so much more to tell there's so much more story there to see to do to like emotions to feel stakes to have in a relationship like that and well uh, like, a lot of fandoms just generally don't have very good, like, uh, like lesbian pairings. It, it's not really all of the fault on the authors that write this stuff. It, it's mostly because female characters, if they are in a story, are usually very one-dimensional, very flat characters that don't have very much chemistry with other female characters to where it would be at all fun to write or, or even think about and, and that's a shame considering the fact that you know I am a, a woman that likes women right but you know over time we've gotten better and we've gotten more characters that are female characters that are fleshed out to the point where you would want to ship them together and stuff like that where you would want them to be in a relationship because they are actual fucking characters right anyway Maro, uh let's see have you do you have any uh, opinions on shipping uh i've been talking about uh sexuality and, and all that too when it comes to characters and the like Right, where a lot of female characters are are designed so boringly, and and it was like the like the thigh highs and all that isn't the actual problem. It's the inherent corporatism behind it, because there's so many way more fun ways to be sexy to do that kind of thing. But it just feels so tacked on. It's just a a way to gouge Gee, on I like it. it for castle. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Golden. Jesus Christ, that thing's loud. I like Prime. I like free shipping. That's why I use Amazon Prime. So true and based, guys. Please don't start shilling for Amazon, though. <laughs> they're not. They're not fun. I mean, I don't like corporations in general, but you know, it's, it's neither here nor there. But we can exploit them. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Huh? Oh no, I've lost a little bit of money. Crimea River. Anyway. Over time, I feel like that. <laughs> Golden. <laughs> Golden, but it's... Oh. Jeez. It's... Uh... Oh my god. Oh. Golden, if... If you aren't tied up, if if you need help, blink twice. <laughs> the fucking goons got her. Well, gone. Uh. I'm gonna say that. Uh. Anyway, right now we're drawing. Uh, the card High Priestess. So, yeah, that's why I went on this, uh, <laughs> this uh, little rant about uh, sexuality in terms of uh, character design and stuff like that. Blink, you blink. <laughs> oh, my fucking. <God. laughs> oh, God. It's awful. 
I've been taken over by <laughs> been taken over by suits. <laughs> the fucking stream's been compromised. How did they find me? <laughs> I didn't even <laughs> I haven't even did, done anything yet. Did you see the Evo DLC reveals? No, I haven't, actually. Oh, yeah. They're finally adding rat to Grand Blue Verse. What the fuck? They're adding rat? I'm not a big fan. Like, I'm. Grand Blue is not my cup of tea. But it is really fun to hear about, you know? Oh, yeah, they revealed Orcane Rivals 2, best boy. Also, uh, Venom Guilty. Oh, yeah, I saw Venom and uh, Dizzy got announced. I'm hoping that, uh, what's it called? Uh, I hope that Robokai gets it's, it's announced. I mean, Kai already exists in the game, but, like, Robokai is my baby girl. Okay. Don't sue me. Uh, <laughs> she Venom when... I know that Overwatch 2 has, like, a new fucking character or something, but I don't really care. Oh, Super fun, actually. I haven't seen much of any gaming news. I've been, like... I've been uncharacteristically busy for, like, a good bit now. working on, uh, what's it called? <laughs> Grinding on her lane and moisturize. I'm just, um, you know, I'm just so, I'm, I'm so, uh, good at working, guys. I'm so, I'm, I'm fucking, I'm so fucking good. I know that, um, what's its face? I know that, uh, last dance will be coming out eventually i haven't actually seen any of the venom movies which is really funny uh but i i it i was never really into like live action movies still not really every once in a while maybe but i i don't actually care all that much about them i i enjoy like the character designs and lore sometimes that we can get from them but overall I, it's just not my thing how many months what do you what do you mean how many months until Last Dance comes out? I don't fucking know. I didn't check. Uh. Graphic design's my passion. Uh, let's see. Oh, I tried a mochi donut for the first time. I think 
They're all right. Uh, not the best, but they're all right. Uh, I really need to do more drawing. I've been off my my one drawing a day grind set because I've been I've been reading so much fucking fan fiction or whatever. I don't know why that's the case, but like it is. I've just been like really into reading. I don't know. And it's not for like a lack of ideas either. Oh, it's a meme. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I saw the meme where it's like the fucking map or whatever. I s some memes just kind of pass me by or whatever. Or, you know, have already passed before I even know them or whatever. Which is kind of funny in itself, you know, but uh, overall, you know, there's also like the, I know about the inches meme, uh, I don't actually know where that originated from, but I do know about it. Watching a bit of. I've been having some series that I've been watching or whatever, like, uh, what's its face? Um, CBS Ghosts and uh, What We Do in the Shadows. I've been watching, which both of them, very fun, both incredibly, incredibly gay, gay shows. And, you know. It's it's just really fun to have like a like a like a bunch of like comedies or whatever where like being gay is the norm or whatever, yeah. Or just like all the characters are implied to be in a polyamorous relationship because I think that's way I think that um like I I think that is such like a like an underrated dynamic like a group dynamic i just think that it's it's just really funny to have like the like everyone every single person in our relationship um and they all and they all like just kind of hate each other also uh, it can it can be like it can be queer platonic too but like in general, I, I I just think that it's it's funny to just have the worst fucking polycule ever. Uh, it's it's not really a concept that's explored by most uh, comedies because they don't. It, it's a, a a very. It's not a new concept. It's just a newly. Okay, concept, in, in terms of the general public, where people were often very uncomfortable with that like even that thought or whatever which you know people still are obviously but you know it, it, it's more like uh it, it's much more interesting dynamics are becoming a thing rather than just having fucking stupid ass uh Cheers friend group. I don't know. You know how many, like, sitcoms are about, like, a bunch of, like, white guys just fucking around? Like, that's, a, that's kind of the majority of them, really. So, I, I think that it... Of course, I don't want it to be oversaturated, but, you know, it, I think that things are slowly getting there, yeah? 
That's why Bing Bang Theory got, is so funny. They got one nine one. Yeah, the one non. It's <laughs> non white guy. I don't, I don't even, I don't even, I think I caught like um, a segment of Big Bang Theory at like one point or whatever, and it was the most terribly boring shit in the fucking world. But I think that Sheldon, like the concept of Sheldon, not, not Sheldon himself, is like fucking hilarious. It's, to me, infinitely funny. Uh it is it's hilarious that he has become um, the go-to to explain autism to someone, which doesn't really help, like, most autism people. <laughs> I mean, like, when I heard that, like, before I knew that I was autistic, I never saw myself in Sheldon in any fucking way. There was nothing about Sheldon that made me go, made me resonate with him, but I, I think that's it's kind of funny, you know? <laughs> My house burned down Bangladesh. <laughs> I am a surgeon. <laughs> that's from House, I think. <laughs> I don't, there's so many, like, doctor dramas out there, but yeah, like, I don't, what is the Big Bang Theory even fucking about? What is Young Sheldon about? Not... It, well, I, I really couldn't tell you what the fuck it's from. Um... Because I, I don't watch the stuff, but also... I mean, they, they run together. The Good Doctor. <laughs> Have you watched The Good Doctor? My face when the, aut the actor is an autistic and has zero clue how to portray it. It's so bad. Yeah, weirdly enough, young Sheldon is, like, actually much better at depicting an autistic person. I said no pickle. I said no pickle. Weirdly enough, like, from... Clips I've seen of young Sheldon, it seems to be like an actually, like, weirdly heartfelt show. Which is weird because it's got, fuck, yeah, it's, it's young Sheldon, or whatever, right? But, like, it's got, like, it, it feels more convincing as autism representation in, in general, or whatever, you know? Like, child Sheldon isn't exactly the kind of autistic I was when I was a child, but the the questions he sometimes asks and stuff like that is generally some of the questions sort of that I had in my own head growing up or whatever. So there's a certain level of like, it, it feels like it, it's like the show is, has two wolves. One is a, like, a weirdly good show, but the other one is Young Sheldon. And Young Sheldon will not, will not go quietly into the night. Okay? This is a bit too much deep. Like, there... <sighs> A 
enough detailing. What is this, a car? <laughs> Oh, well, if you put a D, oh uh, yeah. <coughs> but I'm not actually gonna fucking sell this, cause I really this needs way more concepting and time or whatever. I feel like if I ever did sell merch, I, I'd like spend much more time thinking about the designs. Something I'd actually want to fucking wear, you know? Cause some some merch designs just look like. If a sticker was slapped to it, you know? And, you know, I, I, I kind of want something nice. I, I don't exactly know how to do that, of course. And it wouldn't be very successful, considering the fact that, like, I don't have very many people to buy it, right? But in the future, I think that it might be something I'd like to try, you know? about the good times mm, my day it it Let's see. anyway uh let's see golden what do you think about um Let's see. The, not the sexualization of women in video games, but like the overall, I like, fan service in its most base sense, I guess. Like, uh, I guess it's the, the difference between Evelyn and Misfortune. If we were using league terms, of course, right? Because, you know, like, Misfortune and later appearances, yeah. Yeah, that, that's what it is, right? It, it, it's, yeah, it's exactly lazy, right? Because it, it can be fun. It can be a lot of fun. Like, why does motherfucker have to say such corny, stupid, random-ass lines and have a shitty outfit? Later depictions of Misfortune remedy this but we still have we still have the antiquated one in the game so it feels all the more jarring i mean i guess so yeah it, it's the difference between like you know evelyn you know she's more following that like bayonetta principle or whatever where you could see that the person that designed Evelyn had fun drawing him, you know, designing that. It, it's a, like, it's, it's the way that they hold themselves and stuff like that. It's, it's that, it, well, of course, Evelyn's design is very pandering or whatever. It, it doesn't feel as grimy, as lazy, as money-grubbing as something like Misfortune does. And, and like, designs like Misfortune could work, and, and it can't, and it, clearly the designers found a way to make it work in Rune King and stuff like that, right? But it, it's I mean, it's the difference between lazy design and and design that's actually intentional. It's it's the biggest example of where I can definitively point it out in like a piece of media without being like um actually, I guess. And, I mean, like, stuff like that it kind of, like, totally bogs down the experience of, like, having, like, a fashionable or cool character, 
or whatever. Erm, um, actually, it's, it's really important for MF because she also has guns for hands, so her having big boobies is really important. And, you know... It, her having a large chest, her wearing heels, her having a revealing outfit, that is not the problem. It's the fact that it's fucking lazy. It's so... It's so boring. Like, like I, I can't even imagine, like, the... Like lobotomite that would be into it, you know? I mean, sure, they exist, obviously, right? But they, it's such a... It's, it's not even fucking appealing. Characters being traditionally attractive isn't a an inherent pro problem. It, it, yeah, it, it looks like a shitty pirate Halloween costume that it... it it feels so disjointed, it feels so lazy, it's so... It feels like she was ripped from a different fucking game, because she probably fucking was, right? And they never decided to change it. Except in every other piece of material, which makes it all the more obvious that her design is total garbage. It, it's not... There's nothing about it that has any fun. There's no fun to be had there. There's no, ooh, you know, I can see the, like, the coolness of that, you know? There's no, like, give her scars, give her, give her burns, give her, a, like, a cool, flowy thing. Okay, I'm, I'll dr drink. Hi, Caravan. There's so many ways to make a character attractive, to make them this way, right? And, you know, it's just a, a sense of what you're trying to do with a character or whatever. Here's an example of fan service that I'm not really particularly fond of. And, and that's uh, the new character, Aurora's. Uh, the fact that she has thigh highs. I mean, sure, the, the boot design's it's cool, it's pretty, or whatever. It's just... It's just such a... A nothing element. It adds nothing. There, it's, it's not there for any reason. It's, it's there... Like, I don't even know what the... Like, the... Idea behind it really is supposed to be. There's not really... I mean, like... She needs them, otherwise her fur might get cold. Oh. Oh, oh no, the, the fur that I can't fucking see. Oh, that's, oh, that's crazy. <coughs> she doesn't have particularly, like, it doesn't even show off, like, if it show like, if it showed off the fact that her legs are fucking furry that would be something but it doesn't it it's smooth it, it's com it, it just feels like you know if you're gonna like have something peek out you know you know you can do something fun with it you can do something cool you can have it mean something to a character or whatever right like the fact that Lysandra has only one opening on on the entirety of her character's design it is a really good point it, it's a it's actually a very intentional point of her character design it, it's like sure it's there for fan service right but Lysandra being like showing that she is in fact vulnerable not a in a like in a an immovable statue is, is an important detail. She's still, even though she's still fucked up or whatever, she's still human. That's the point. There's a point there. And sure, her being all covered up would also be fun and a, a good detail or whatever, but it, it works. There's a fucking point.
that you should give her fishnets instead. Who? Uh, Aurora? Because that... To be honest, fishnets can... are really... really specific. Or whatever. Personally, I think they're kind of fucking ugly. But... You know, sometimes it works out very fun. But, you know, it, it's got to be, you know, done correctly, obviously, right? But, yeah. Aurora. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, if she just had fishnets and we could see all of her bunny leg, that could be fun, you know? Then you could see the fact that she is a bunny Vistaya. I mean, I don't really... The fishnets... Uh, kind of unnecessary to be quite honest with you but uh, it, it depends on how they're styled of course right how they are used how they're specifically made or whatever but it's and of course fan service doesn't have to even fucking mean anything it, it just has to be you know <laughs> Like, something the character would fucking do, I, I guess, this is the main thing. Like, the character wasn't just dressed up by an employee or whatever, wasn't just designed, but was, you know, actively chose to wear the outfit that they wear. That, that's a big thing for making, like, designs feel less scummy. is Because, like, if the character's not having fun, then why the fuck would you? Remember when Ash in the lore was like, how do you like the curves? I was talking about the bow. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Ash is, is such... Hash is such a good example of, like, how fan ser like, the fan service that she provides is, like, so incredibly fucking ugly, is the thing. Like, it is, like, I, I wouldn't put her anywhere. Uh, like, it's, it's, it's just, like, bad, like, it's bad fashion. It's not, it's not even, like, fun, it's not even pretty to look at. Like, which is kind of the point of fan service is to make it attractive to look at. So, like, and, and it's just like such a, <laughs> it's such a weird, it's so, uh, it's so, it's just like, what are we doing here? Worst is Jana being a phone line stripper. Yeah, and with Jana too, we're getting into this outfit is fucking ugly. I mean, sure, if it was rendered better, maybe, sure, right? But, like, the, like it makes no fucking sense. If she's a spirit god, why does she wear clothing in the first place? I mean, Kindred doesn't. I mean, that would be way sexier if they're going with that. But why, why is she sexy? It, she doesn't need a reason to be sexy, of course. I mean, it can just be the fact that she's an attractive woman. But, you know, with so many attractive woman characters, you kind of need, like, a, like a, a way to differentiate them. You have to, like, you need to, you know, be able to tell your Janas from your Syndras. Both of them are floating women. If uh, Jana had, like, a goth look, I w it's, it'd be a little hard to tell them apart, you know? For real, it makes her character look like she's wearing a costume. Yeah, and, and that's the point, is that, like, characters really shouldn't feel like they're wearing costumes. Or if they are, it should be the fact that they are having fun in the costume, you know? Like, they're theater actors or whatever, not the fact that they're, like, forced into a costume, yeah? Like, this is what this character would intentionally wear to something or whatever 
uh, you know, I brought up Lollipop Chainsaw, and that's a good example. Because cheerleader costumes are a very common thing. It's a very tired trope or whatever, but Juliet makes it work, despite the fact that the outfit isn't really all that different, because she feels like the type of character, the type of person that would wear something like that, would enjoy being in that and having fun with it. it mostly, character designs should be appealing. They should be fun or whatever, right? It's, it's a thing with, like, um, I, I find this happens with, like, characters, like, Dai and Rompa characters, like, kind of suffer from this quite a bit, right? Like, where, like, in the second game, Mikan, she is the designated fan service character, and she, like, it feels like this fan service is, like, slapping her or whatever. Like, she, she doesn't want to do this, is, is the main thing. It, so it, it's not fun. It's it's not like, oh, yeah, this is, like, a, a fun little moment, a fun little bit of teasing or something, right? It feels like th this poor girl is being objectified, and... and and it, it feels wrong. It, it's why it feels so scummy. Whereas in the first game or whatever, like even though Junko is wearing a much more revealing outfit, it fits because Junko is the kind of character who is having fun. She is, she, the way that she is, the kind of person she is, wears the, the outfit she wears because it's the outfit she likes to wear. The, the way that she likes to present herself. And it's a very good distinction in that sense. It's of like, you want to, like, it, it's not about, like, going about it, like, uh, yes, Mikan's the, like, the, un, like, the uneven Hime cut uh, nurse character. Wines, it's a lot. And, I mean, like, tropes are tropes or whatever, but, you know, I'd rather, you know, it be fun for everyone involved. You know, like, the person that is doing the fan service isn't being forced to do the fan service. They are servicing the fans because it's fun. It's, um, because, you know, fan service is fun, in, like it should be at least, right? Sex isn't a, a strictly good or a bad thing. It's, it's just, it's a very neutral topic that has a lot of emotion for everyone, right? But the way that we view it, the way that media twists it is, a, it's, it's, it's sad, really, it is, because sexuality is both condemned and adored, and it's such a way of looking at it, right, where, like, uh, like younger gays don't like leather, like the leather community or whatever. But the, the like, I, I think it comes from America's general prudishness in general, but it, it's just like a, it's a thing where if it's between consenting adults, it, it really doesn't fucking matter. We should do a stream analyzing whether each splash art with feet out would match the character's personality and style. Oh yeah, everyone had like a total fucking blow up to the fact that like Briar's feet are out, which is kind of 
like, almost hilariously hypocritical, considering the fact that there are so many female characters with their feet out, especially in splash arts. But that was never... It was never, like, a big deal. It, it's because... Let's see. It... Fetishes by themselves are not bad things. So the things that people are into are not inherently bad. But it, the way that we view them is, is very... Uh, and, like, it's a very weird thing, you know? Like, Fairy Ezreal makes sense because they definitely would be a femboy bottom for real. I mean, yeah. But, like... <laughs> With, like, the foot fetish thing or whatever. Like, fetishes in general. I, I mean, like, I don't... I mean, I don't really want to get that much into it, right? But it is... If you are fucking into feet or Wonder Bread or what the fuck ever, that is fine. And, and it shouldn't be looked at as, like, a... As the laughing stock it typically is seen as. I mean, it's weird and it's unexpected, but that's because our our view of sexuality in general is so incredibly narrow. And that can be it too, right? But it, it it's always just like a thing of, sure, you can see say, oh yeah, it's the writer's barely disguised fetish. But, but where do we go from there? At the end of the day, like, what, what are, like, what is, what does that mean in general? Like, you, are we gonna do anything about that or whatever? Looking at you insane aquarium dev, devs, I mean, like, it can be, like, weird and, a bit uncomfortable, sure, but I mean, the fucking pregnant fish isn't gonna isn't gonna fucking stab me. When am I gonna I'm gonna lose sleep over the fact that that exists? No. I'm just gonna go, oh, that's kind of weird. I mean, I guess that's it's what it is, or whatever, or one of the devs just doesn't understand what context it has and it just aged incredibly poorly which would be funny by itself right but yeah it, it's just a thing of like so much outrage is is poured on to this kind of stuff where like sure if it's sexualizing like i'm like a character that's a minor i mean we have to talk about that yeah, like that that's it's, that's kind of fucked up and wrong. But if it's just a fucking adult woman with her goddamn feet out and, and the splash arts just showing you their fucking feet, I mean if it's not your thing or if it makes you uncomfortable, you don't have to look at it. Oh, uh, it, they're a part of the fucking body. Eh. And I'm not saying that you can't joke about this kind of stuff either, because, I mean, inherently it is, it is kind of funny. It's kind of strange, kind of goofy, right? But there's also got to be a, a sort of a thing of, like, giving people respect, I, I guess. And, I mean, like, you're free to have, if you have a dissenting opinion, let me know. What do you think about it? I mean, it's not, we so rarely talk about this kind of stuff because it's typically something you don't 
talk about. It, it's seen as shameful and embarrassing and something very taboo. Which, uh, life's too short to care about stuff like that, to be quite honest with you. It, But it's always it's important to hear what other people have to say. I don't like intentionally making people... Like, I don't intentionally like making people uncomfortable, right? I'm not gonna lie, there's objectively goofy fetish stuff, like the people who are into gas. Yeah, I mean, like... But... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> To be honest, life is fucking goofy. To be quite honest with you, like, a lot of it, goddamn stupid, right? And fetishes are mostly just, like, hyper-focusing and sexualizing those aspects of life. Which makes it funny, yeah? And I think that as a result of that sometimes jokes or whatever that were once just considered jokes or like harmless bits or whatever are now turned into something more because the internet is now more familiar with like those kinds of people existing. But, like, I, I guess, I mean, like, it took, like, I mean, it's still not, like, a, a total thing or whatever, but, like, it took the internet so fucking long for, like, furries to be accepted as just normal fucking people that just have, like, a weird kind of thing going on, rather than the awful demon spawn that they were portrayed to be, the the highest form of cringe, the coup de grace of everything wrong with the internet or whatever, yeah? When they're just a, they're just a sub-community, a very large sub-community that found each other, sure, but they're just, I mean, yeah, the, their goof, their fetishes are goofy. Sure, yeah, right? But also, at the same time, that doesn't make them any less s s s human or deserving of f f respect and stuff like that. Which, I mean, it is, it, it's hard for people to, like, understand that, it, like, that concept to them is so is so strange to them because there's a difference between going oh that's kind of goofy and oh uh, I'm I'm gonna fucking kill you because this is ridiculous or whatever yeah motherfuckers be seeing really weird stuff like I'm gonna hunt them for sport and beat them up with a bat when it's just a regular group of humans expressing themselves yeah exactly it, I mean like it's such a I mean like it, it's Deviancy shouldn't be seen as something that dehumanizes a person. Of course, you can make fun of it. You can say, oh, yeah, the furries, they're kind of, kind of funny. You know, that's it's kind of a funny thing. But I, I would never, in, in a million years ago, I would beat them the fuck up or whatever because of that opinion, right? Because of the way they are. Because if they aren't fucking dogs, which the majority of the community not doing, <laughs> I don't care. They're just normal people. They're expressing themselves in a, a different way. And, you know, I, I think that's why I, I'm quick to defend that kind of behavior. Because of people 
like that, the, the bad faith actors out there, you know? Kind of reminds me of when someone posts a picture of their beloved pet cow or pig and something, and there's weirdos who are all like, I can't wait to eat that steak, haha. I, I think that you may be a bit more psychotic and weird of a p person than you want to appear. Y yeah, I mean, like, it's just not... The joke's not funny. Like... I think that people are just not very, like, they don't understand how it sounds, exactly. How, how, not how it sounds, how they come across as not fucking funny, delusional as fuck. What are, what are you talking about? This is just a random person on the internet who you will never fucking meet. <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> but, you know. The internet has made room for those kinds of very socially inept people. For their antisocial behavior or whatever to be rewarded so, so nicely or whatever, you know? They are, are reward- they- they get fed an echo chamber that says that this type of behavior, that this sort of thing is perfectly fine to do, which, I mean, like, of course, they're not fucking babies. A lot of them are grown ass men or whatever, right? Typing this shit out. But it... it it's still just as clueless as a teenager writing that down or whatever, you know? Nah, people that are... But, yeah, nah, but people that, that who inherently hate furries aren't put... Are instantly put on alert on my mind. Y yeah, because it's such a, like... Yeah, I, I get that it's fucking, like, it, it, it's kind of goofy, it's kind of weird or whatever, right? But, it, it, what, did furries kill your grandma? What, what, what happened? What, huh? <laughs> Are you mad that they make more money than you do? Uh, like, I don't... Are you mad that people have hobbies? They, like, I, I just don't... It's just such a, I mean, there's so, like, the people that go, oh, this game's made by a furry, isn't that, isn't that gross, isn't that weird that this happened, or, or whatever, or, like, seeing, like, oh, this, or going after the fact and going, oh, this is fetish material, or whatever, people aren't defined by their, scent. like, they're not, They aren't a monolith of people. They don't inherently just think about sex all day. Sometimes they just make designs that look appealing to them. It's not really... It... It's such a... A weird thing to do or whatever. To... It, yeah, little bro has no sense of, of community. They're welcome, Din. <laughs> I mean, like, seriously. Yeah. Or the people that say that, like, leather king communities shouldn't be at pride, it, like, is so inherent. Like, it misses the point so incredibly. It's such a, it's such an, like, an immediate tell that these people, like, that this person doesn't actually consider people that have more deviance than that people. That they aren't, that they didn't also fight alongside with the queer community. That they aren't also queer people. Like, it's not, it's so... I guess that's what I'm saying by, like, fetishes 
So, well, you don't have to, like, respect them. You, like, treat them sacred or whatever, right? I, I'm saying respect them as people is the main thing. Because they are people, and they're just weirdos like everyone else. Just because they are doing something more publicly or whatever doesn't really give you the right. Especially when it's clear that, like, it's, it's not for all ages and that kind of thing. Especially in that case or whatever. It's kind of like when people are like, Oh, this artist draws Zen SFW. And, you know, they could have done so... They're, they're so talented. Why, why did they just waste it on this or whatever? Which is, like... Such a, a, a weird way of consuming things. Because artists aren't people that just produce content. They're not printers. They are people that want to enjoy the things that they make and, and create. And if, and you can look at their safe for work stuff. It's, it's, it's not like, a, oh, woe is me. They're, they're, guys, I can't believe that they drew an adult character in an adult situation. Like, it, it just, it's so, it, it's, it's, it's more than a little silly to me, but that's just me, you know? I mean, yeah. If you don't want to see that kind of stuff, if you don't want to experience the sexual or whatever, yeah. The real takeaway is that we should keep providing the fan service of men instead. So true. I mean, we, we, like, it's so rare that we get, like, that kind of, that kind of fashion, that kind of spice for men, which is, it's funny. I, I mean, like, it's so plain and boring. Like, the fact that, like, middle-aged women were so obsessed with Fifty Shades of Grey is really, like, a real telling sign that, like, male fan service as a genre is so disproportionately not covered, which is really funny. It is it's incredible. It, it's really funny to watch or whatever. It's also really funny when, like, to to view different yaoi styles. Because you can always, like, you can always, like, semi-tell when yaoi is made by a straight woman, when it's made by a gay man, and if it's made by a queer person. Because there's, like, very clear differences, which is, like, it's like a, a very specific thing. It, it, which I think is really funny to, like, review or whatever, but, like, it, it's true. Like, as soon as I see, like, a bar on man, I'm like, this was drawn by a gay man or, like, a queer man. That is how that style is so specific or whatever. And it's clear to see what each demographic likes to see in the other kind of thing it's really quite interesting to take apart and look at it in a, in a grander picture you know like uh, how like the straight wom women typically like maintain the the man woman dynamic in in yaoi and stuff like that or whatever and you can see it very clearly where they'll have a very muscular, traditionally masculine men, man and a very clearly effeminate man. 
size difference galore, all that stuff. Very, very common for straight men, like straight women. Straight men, yaoi, is just sports. It's okay, you can't convince me otherwise. I mean, like, that shit is so homoerotic. Um, but, like, gay men, yaoi, or whatever, like, bar and that kind of stuff, really focuses on, like, the masculine form in, in all of its aspects or whatever. It, it's very, like, it's very in touch with how to draw men or whatever. Uh, sometimes you can see, like, that this person grew up drawing, like, Dragon Ball Z and that kind of th stuff. It it's a really... It, like, I, I love picking apart styles like that, you know? Because you can almost see, like, what path an artist got to, like, where they are now. Like, what kind of influences have really stuck with an artist. Even if their style is wholly unique, you can, like, it's not about saying, oh, this style looks like Ghibli or whatever, right? It's more like going, this style is clearly made by an artist that liked those kinds of movies and stuff like that, or, or liked that aesthetic of movie. Because... Art is about aesthetics. That, that's the main thing about art, really. Anyway, I think that... I, I don't think I'm actually gonna fucking go for the full coloring on this. But, yeah. Maybe we can... Uh, if you can send me some video games or whatever... Um, I can probably try and pick apart the styles that went into them or something like that. Uh, or like video game art. Or or just artists that you like. And maybe you can try and pick apart my art too. I, I think that's fun. I, I, I really do think like I examining styles every little bit and piece. It, it is it's a lot of fun. What they're affected by, what they're influenced by. And that kind of stuff. Right before you said, if you send me some video, if you send me some video games, I got am had it ambushed. This is terrible. I'm so sorry, Golden. I I wasn't talking about like um, art styles. It, send me art styles you want me to pick apart and that kind of stuff, for uh, pick apart my own style. See how that, like, I, cause I I. I think it's fun to try and figure that out. I've actually managed to play detective quite a lot of times because I've gotten very good at, like, tracing styles right back to the person that used them or whatever. Which is funny because I accidentally dock like, I guess not docks, but like I discovered the identities of two separate artists that did not have their face or their, like, names anywhere in the, like, abandoned pieces of art that I found. But I, I think that's a really, it's a, it's, art is like a, I mean, it's an expression of self and that kind of thing, you know? Let's see. But. Uh, maybe you can uh, DM me or uh, next stream you can tell me like what kind of things you think that my style says about me. And that kind of thing. I mean, and we could go over it and stuff like that. And I'd love to take apart some styles, maybe of some artists that you enjoy or whatever. Look at them, see what might go into them. I mean, like, obviously, I won't know every reference. I won't know the exact details of specific pieces or artists. It's because I'm not, unless I actually know them, you know, I'm not a mind reader. And it's not 100% perfect, obviously, right? But it is it's a way of, 
looking at art. And it's fun to find that out, you know? Anyway, with that being said, let's uh, see what I've got up next for the agenda. The agenda is confused. The gay agenda is confused. Um, no. Uh, I wrote TF2 question mark. That's funny. Uh, let's see. I already played a game this month, so... I've determined from your art that you're gay. Oh, wow. If you didn't know that I was a woman, would you be able to tell that I was a woman? Or would you just be able to tell that I'm gay? And that's it. Like, I always find it funny because, like, people that have never heard my voice, have never really seen how I interact with people or whatever, or, like, read my bio, I... I think it's interesting to see how you're perceived by the world, right? I think that probably... Because... Because that works out pretty well. Um, let me... See this out. I think I th I think so just from because of the proportions of some characters. So you could see that like I was a gay woman or whatever is what you're trying to <laughs> trying to tell me. I mean like the proportions of characters, I mean like it's the, what I'm most comfortable with. I mean, like, it's pretty obvious, I believe, that I started with women and then found out how to draw men more consistently over the years. Though so I am working on making them, you know, more masculine and stuff like that, obviously, but, you know. Uh, let's see. I think next stream I'll do show by rock because I mean, the anime wasn't all that good, to be quite honest with you, but their character designs are fun, and it's weird that that was made by Sanrio, you know? Overall, like, masked men is, are kind of hard to draw, you know? Uh, but over time, I think I've gotten way better at, like, defined face shapes and jaws and I think it's also because I'm not really a fan of characters that are very traditionally masculine anyhow like I'm not going to be drawing a lot of characters with beards it's unless I'm really like oh that character's baby girl or whatever and most of the time it's not that kind of thing start drawing hy extremely hyper muscular lo lions unlock You, like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not gonna fucking do that, okay? I'm not, I'm just not going to. Anyway. <laughs> With that being said, I'm going to end the stream here. I hope you guys have a good day, a good, so a good rest of your day, a good rest of your week, a good rest of your evening. 
I'll see you guys next time with uh, Show by Rock or something else. Probably not that. I'll probably just update. Yeah. All right. See you guys. Good night.